Hey, welcome back to Introduction to Ionic. My name is Dan, and in this video, I'm gonna talk really briefly about the difference between Capacitor and Cordova. When you get into building your Ionic application, um, you'll see these two uh, technologies mentioned, and I wanna make sure we understand clearly what the difference is. Uh, Capacitor and Cordova are both similar technologies they both have the job of taking a web application and deploying it into a web view of a, of a native app and then giving that web app access to native APIs. Cordova was kind of the first one out there that did this. It's been out there for a long time and uh, older versions of Ionic used Cordova uh, to deploy the web app, their web apps to uh, native applications. Cordova is a, a community developed and maintained tool. Um, but recently, the Ionic team uh, decided that since uh, this is such a core technology, that they were going to build their own version of this. And so the Ionic team built Capacitor as an alternative to Cordova. Capacitor does all the exact same things. It's maintained by the Ionic team instead of being maintained by the community. And what this means is that we can kind of trust that that tool will always be up to date and that it'll, it'll get the latest features and bug fixes. Now the difference between these two doesn't really matter um, when we are uh, working inside of our web app only. So if we're talking about building lists or forms uh, and, you, and hitting APIs and adding buttons to our application, um, Capacitor and Cordova aren't involved. Uh, but as soon as we start talking about interfacing with native APIs or deploying to production, this is where uh, these technologies come into play. And uh, as you're getting to that part of your application development, and you're looking at documentation or uh, researching issues, it can be easy to fall into a, uh, into a solution that, was, um, that involves Cordova instead of Capacitor. And so I bring this up uh, just to make sure that you're aware as you're getting to this part of development um, that we're targeting the right technology. And so a lot of times, if I'm running into an issue with interfacing uh, with a native API, I'll add a capacitor to my Google search just to make sure that I'm getting the right results back. When it comes to plugins, the Ionic team uh, did a really good job of adding, making sure that Ionic was backwards compatible with Cordova plugins. So let's say we're talking about interfacing with the camera. There's a Cordova camera plugin and a capacitor camera plugin. The Cordova plugin is a little bit older. It's maintained by the community. The capacitor plugin is maintained by the Ionic team. They would always recommend that you use the newer capacitor plugin, but the Cordova plugins do work. So uh, there's a, a lot of Cordova plugins that don't exist in Capacitor yet, and we might have to go that direction. Um, but for the most part, you should be able to just use the Capacitor plugins. Hopefully that clears up the difference between Capacitor and Cordova. That's all we have for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.